Hello everyone, Silverstruck here. Welcome to the Silverstruck channel. I hope you're all doing well. I'd like to share with you some recent stacking pickups along with a couple numismatic coin pickups. So, that said, part one of the video is about silver stacking and part two will be about coins. Let's get right into it and we'll start with 20 ounces of silver I added to the stack from my LCS. Was very happy to have found my LCS stocked IGR bars. So, hadn't seen these at the LCS before. I have seen these on many different YouTube channels and kind of had my eye on picking them up. There's a couple uh, really key features of this bar that I'm going to go over that I, that I like. But before I do that, let's talk about how this bar is made. It is 10 troy ounces of 3.9 fine silver. And it's a chunky bar. I like the size of it. It's good in the hand. And it's, it has a real appealing finish to it. One of the features I really like is that it's serialized. A second feature that I really appreciate is the fact that it comes in a certificate of authenticity or uh, COA. So that's really nice. It has a lot of the same information repeated on the back and the entire bar is coated in plastic, kind of like a germanium mint bar. So it uh, helps protect uh, the bar. So a uh, really nice pickup. I was able to get uh, 20 ounces, two bars, and they have sequential serial numbers. So anytime I can also do that, makes me happy. I like my serial numbers. So uh, super excited uh, that the LCS had some nice silver for me to pick up today. Uh, the next bar I want to talk about actually came to me from a member in the community. It's this Inglehard right here, this Portrait Big E bar. This is a standard press bar from the 1980s from Engelhard. They're not incredibly rare by any stretch, but still highly collectible. And I'd like to thank uh, Patriotic Stacker for reaching out to me and uh, letting me purchase this bar. So that was very nice. I uh, appreciate you, Patriotic Stacker. So uh, excited to add another one of these bars to the stack. Engelhard produced about 450,000 of these press bars. So if you're interested in collecting Inglehard, they're highly collectible. This is the best bar to get into as far as I'm concerned, or one of the two best bars. I'll, I'll talk about another bar in just a moment. And uh, it does have a serial number. So uh, really nice all the way around. Really excited uh, to have some more press Inglehard. About a week ago, the LCS called me and told me that they had the Portrait Eagle 10 ounce bars in stock. This bar has eluded me for a long time. It's a very common bar. It's not uh, it's not as plentiful as the Big E Portrait Bar. Inglehard produced about 300,000. So there's actually fewer of these made, although they pretty much sell at the same price and they're just considered a generic press bar, even though they are uh, highly collectible Inglehard. So excited to have been able to finally pick up the Big E in a 10 ounce. I have the one ounce versions. Uh, but not the 10 ounce version, so now I do. This example is, uh, I was kind of surprised to find uh, how good of an example this is. This is a blast white uh, bar and is wrapped in the original Inglehard plastic. So that's really nice and uh, this bar is aged very well. So normally you find these, they have a patina on them, uh, maybe some toning, so to find a blast white example is a little bit more uh, difficult. The next example does have a little bit of toning, but before I pick that bar up, I'd like to also mention that these two bars happen to also be sequential serial members. Now that adds a lot more value for the vintage bars because they have to survive from the 1960s, 70s, or 80s uh, with the sequential numbers. So this has been in somebody's collection for a long time, and uh, the longer uh, time goes on, the harder it is to get bars that are sequentially numbered. So second bar here is also a blast white example, uh, but it does have some toning starting to happen right there. And that's usually the color of a lot of the bars that you'll find from Inglehard that are out there because these bars are getting old. Uh, even the press ones, even the common press bars you see right here from the 1980s. So, um, you know, they have some age on them now. So anyway, uh, pretty happy to have added... 50 ounces total, 30 ounces of vintage silver, and 20 ounces of, we'll call it generic, even though I think they're they're slightly better than generic bars, but uh, 50 ounces of silver added to the stack. All right, my friends, welcome to part two of the video, numismatic coin collecting. 
I have a couple uh, recent pickups I'm pretty excited to show you. Before I show you that, I want to talk about this book and why I've decided to add some of my top coins into this book versus, you know, your standard plastic slab holders, uh, like your NGC or PCGS plastic holder. The reason's real simple. This, uh, this reads kind of like a picture book, and it's really fun to kind of look at your coins in a date set. So here on page one, I have uh, the Carson City Collection, 1870s and 1880s. On page two, you can see I have the uh, 1890s. With a you know whole bunch of uh, open slots here, I can add coins to, and then uh, this is part of my uh, 1878 collection here. And I have some duplicates and triplicates here and there, so you can see here I have another 1878 Carson City. This one an MS62, or on page one I had an MS65. So I try to sell my coins that upgrade them uh, because it gets expensive accumulating all of these coins. Doesn't always work out. Sometimes I, I still keep uh, keep the coins around. Uh, same thing here, I have some uh, some kind of random date 1880 coins up here, and uh, then we have my 1921 collection, including the uh, high relief 1921 peace dollar in mint state condition. And you can see here, here's a good example of another duplicate, 1921D in mint state 65, and then we have another 1921D in mint state 64. Unnecessary for the collection, but uh, sometimes that happens as you upgrade your coins. So I have a few more coins that I'm going to show you, and uh, one's going to be an upgrade. So I'm going to flip back to this right here. I've upgraded that coin for a couple different reasons, so I'm going to show you that one first. All right, here we have it. 1878, seven tail feather, reverse of 1878, in a mint state 63 condition, graded by PCGS and the older green holder. There's a couple versions of the older green holder. It's a pretty nice coin overall so it's a slight upgrade I, I left the auction sticker on this one because it actually has some more information and this is a VAM a VAM 131C2 now the VAMs are wicked plentiful uh, with the Morgan dollars and having a VAM doesn't necessarily mean the coins gonna be worth that much more but uh, it's pretty cool and uh, I like reading about the VAMs and going into VAM, VAM world and checking them all out and stuff like that so a uh, pretty cool coin to add to the collection and uh, is going to end up replacing uh, this coin here in the NGC holder. When it comes to older Morgans, I am a PCGS guy. Um, with exception of uh, the series I'm collecting, uh, which is actually more slab collecting on those um, Casino Vault ho hoard coins that I have. So I'll have more of those. I actually have more of those in the mail, but that'll be for another video. My second pickup is this one right here. This is just a 1923 Philly. Uh, graded by PCGS in mint state 64 condition, uh, peace dollar. Pretty nice example. Does have a little bit of uh, stuff going on there in the left field, um, right there by your mouth and chin, but uh, not too bad. Check out the reverse. It's funny. I was watching uh, Fish's video today, and uh, you know he's he's starting to try to collect peace dollars because of the cost of the Morgans, and also into the old green holders. So it's it's kind of funny how sometimes you watch somebody else's channel, and uh, they're they're doing something similar. So I think Fish and I have pretty similar tastes when it comes to some of these uh, coins. So um, there you have it. A couple coins added to the collection has been rough going because the values of the Morgan dollars are sky high right now. So it's been a little bit rough going trying to add to the collection, but uh, still eking along with a, uh, a few nice mint state examples. Well, if you've made it this far in the video and you're wondering why I've been wearing gloves the entire time, it's simply because it's winter in New Hampshire, so my hands are a little dry and chapped. Figured it'd be more appealing to see the white gloves versus my chap hands. So hopefully I'll get my, uh, my hands in order soon. So anyhow, uh, again, 50 ounces of silver added to the stack and a couple really cool numismatic coin pickups. I enjoy reading the comment section, so please don't forget to leave me a comment. And as always, thank you so much for watching.